This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 5, Episode 31, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington across social media. And I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of the Mighty Hawks Time Network on audio and here on YouTube on video. Well, man, I, I have to say I didn't really like the Washington football team's chances against Tampa Bay, but they took it to them from the start and they took it to them the whole game. Yeah. And it was a fair win. It wasn't Tampa screwing up so much. I mean, they did, said Washington, but they deserved that win, fair and square. Yeah, I mean, you know, when Tampa comes out and, and receives the ball and there's still 15 minutes left on the first in the first quarter and they're already at first and 15, you kind of knew something was going on. You know, they got a false start on their first play. The Washington finally gets a three and out to start a game. And then, you know, they picked off Brady twice. I mean, Rick, they had four interceptions going into this game and they picked off probably the greatest quarterback that I've ever seen play the game twice in one game. It was just destined from the beginning. And, you know, I, I don't know if – I don't know what happened during the bye week, but something changed. You know, they were undermanned. You know, Montez is out with the jaw. They were getting a couple guys back. But, you know, it, it just – something something clicked yesterday. It all clicked yesterday. And like you said, they're, they, they didn't play a perfect game. But to be nine-and-a-half-point underdogs in your own stadium – you know, that was pretty big to to end up beating them by 10. Yeah, and then you lost Chase Young uh, in his first half, and it came out today that Chase Young uh, will miss the rest of the season. Coach Ron Rivera would not disclose exactly what the injury was. I mean, come on, Ron, my God, everybody knows it's a torn ACL. Yeah. And you to say that. The one thing you've got to remember about torn ACLs is quite often it takes a year to rehab. This is November. Next season starts in September. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready. Maybe he could be. He's young. That'll help. But heavier guys tend to have harder times with weight-bearing injuries like that. I don't know that he'll be ready for opening day uh, next year on this. So, you know, he limped off the field rather than take the cart. And he came back on crutches, gave a halftime speech. And, and yet, I wish he had played as well as all his other actions because what a bad year. Sophomore slump for year for Shakespeare. He had one and a half sacks, was rarely a factor. Never saw him catch people from behind or cross the line like he did last year so well. He really didn't do very well at all. And I don't know that he was any closer to figuring it out on there. So the, the key here is now they've also lost Sweat. He's going to miss a few more weeks with a fractured jaw, of which he's on a liquid diet. So you know he's going to lose 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. And he may not make it back for the end of the season anyway. Mm -hmm. So you move up your backups who are okay, but then they've got no backups. That's where you're going to really get hurt on all of this because there's going to be plays out there with street free agents or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm amazed they played as well after losing Chase early. And, you know, it came down to the end, sort of. They get the ball with 11 minutes to go. And I thought, man, it'd be a great time for a rig drill. But, oh, my God, there's 11 minutes left. They can't do that. <laughs> and they did. No, they it was don't. the longest their longest drive since 1991 Super Bowl year. Mm -hmm. um, ten and a half minutes. Now it's fourth and one on the goal. And I'm sitting there thinking, they're not going to kick a field goal to go up by seven. It's like, no, if they miss, if they don't make it across, they got to go 99 yards in 30 seconds to win, which, uh, you know, I wouldn't have put it past Brady and them doing that. But luckily they scored a touchdown and did it. Uh, it was one of the more improbable wins in a while, but, Thinking like last year, they they wanted Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh was eleven and zero at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I the, you know, I would say in Tampa was missing Antonio Brown. They were missing Gronk, but that said, Washington beat them fair and square mm -hmm. uh, in a stadium that I would say had about they said fifty two thousand. I would agree, about half and half. There was a guy outside in the parking lot selling all Bucks gear and Brady stuff. <laughs> you know, I was like, really? Never seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, Pretty even crowd. The crowd wasn't that into it because it was kind of even. Um, you know, it was a good day. At least it gives them a bump. I, they came back, I guess, maybe fresher. 
from things. Um, and I would say it gives them a chance in the second half of the season to, to maybe win half their games and, and finish around seven and 10. A couple things real quick from yesterday. Um, one, you know, it's what, 16, 13 and Milne fumbles. And you're thinking, oh, crap, I've seen this before. And they stopped them. You know, they went down, they scored, uh, you know, to make it what, uh, 20, it was like 23 to 16 or something like that. I can't remember. But then, you know, um, or no, I'm sorry. It was 23 to what? 13, 23 to 13. And, yeah. you know, Tampa scores on the, on the long touchdown to Evans. And you're thinking, okay, uh, you know, now it's a three point game. And then suck up goes out and misses the extra point. And you're thinking, oh man, <laughs> you know, what is in the water today? Like, you know, this isn't your normal veteran. I mean, that, that Bucks team is full of superstars and veterans, you know, like you said, they, they were missing Gronk. They were missing Antonio Brown. They were missing Richard Sherman guys like that, but they still had Tom Brady. They still had Chris Godwin. They still had Mike Evans. They still had Leonard Fournette and, you know, Fournette was his main option all, all game. Um, but then you're thinking, you know, oh crap. <laughs> okay. We get the ball back with 10 minutes left. You know, let's see if we can run some of this clock out and then just maybe hold them to a field goal and you're up by a point. And I swear it was just perfect game planning for that last 10 and a half minutes by, by Turner and company. They, they had a, a, a fair balance of run to pass, you know, up until they got to the goal line. It, it was just, it was, it was just a, a, a historic drive for this team that I, like you said, we haven't seen since 91. Um, two things that really impressed me. I, I said it before and I'll say it again. DeAndre Carter is the unsung hero of this, of this, of this wide receiver group. You know, that guy was just waiting for a chance and he scored on two beautiful touchdowns from Heineke. You know, we saw it again yesterday and we saw it against the Broncos, if I'm not mistaken. Um, second one is, you know, I don't care what it's going to take. You pay Terry McLaurin when he's, when he's up, you pay that man because for him to get that first down, get sandwiched in between two guys slump over and you think, Oh crap, he's already been out with a shoulder injury for a little while. And he came back. Eh, we just lost our best wide receiver along with our best defensive player. Uh, and then he gets up and pounds his chest, and and it, you could just hear the, the the entire crowd just gasp and roar as soon as he got up. You know, and there was a lot of plays. There was a lot of plays by a lot of guys. You know, we had our our uh, Adam Humphreys play of the game again when he when he school uh, got that first down. I mean, just everybody contributed, and it was a like I said, it wasn't a perfect game, but it was about as most of a complete game this entire season that we've seen them play. And, you know, Rick, I hate to play the what if game, but man, what if they had a played like this all season? You know, where, where would they be? They definitely would have beat the Saints. They probably would have beat the uh, the Chiefs or they could at least be they could have been a lot closer to the Chiefs. And they probably would have beat the Broncos with that performance yesterday because those the Saints and the Broncos, I mean, they were just trying to give Washington in the game and, and Washington just couldn't take it. You know, it's it's you know, I hate to play the what if game, but man, it, it, you just got to think what if. And the unsung hero might've been Joey Sly. One of my new, yeah. favorite. you know, he made, when he lines up for the first field goal, I thought if this gets blocked, man, this place is going to melt down. Yep. And he hits a 46 yarder, he hit a couple of 20 somethings. And the thing I really liked about this dude was on a kickoff, he forced the returner out of bounds and he dove at him trying to make the tackle. He's and a big boy. Man. He's you a know, big boy, man. He looks like a linebacker. I mean, you see all these tats on him and everything. I mean, you know, I thought this is this is a cool dude. He really does seem like a cool guy. And I thought, wow, I, I like this kicker on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it was just a good day. I thought the coaches had a great game plan offensively and defensively. They were waiting for Brady's passes all day. Yep. You know, had that about Del Rio in a long time, but yeah, you kind of wonder where did it come from and, and, you know, why isn't it hasn't it been here? That their season gets sunk, you know, at two and six. You, you, the problem, the difference between last year when they came back, Dallas is going to win like 10 games or something. Right. So they, they just can't catch up to them. And they can't really catch up to a wild card, I don't think. You'd have to win out. I mean, you have three games. <clears throat> you know, they could actually win some. They're playing Carolina, they're playing Vegas, playing Seattle. They could win any of those three, and then you have five division games left where you can try and make your own destiny, but it would be one hell of a – you're going to have to win nine games. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have two down the stretch again. 
I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, it's unlikely, but still. And I know, look, there's a lot of people out there that wanted them to tank and get a quarterback and get a top five draft pick. You can't do that. These are grown men. These are paid professionals. They're not going to tank. They're not going to tank the season away just to get a player for next year. Um, so don't give me that crap. Um, you know, they're not <laughs> they're not the Philadelphia Eagles last year. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, because you got to think about it. The, the NFC West has the Rams and and Cardinals. There's probably two uh, two playoff teams right there one division winner one wild card you know the north it looks like it's the packers you know i know the the you know the lions they're not gonna make any movement but then you have the bears and the and the um minnesota floating around 500 and then you got the south you know it's it's obviously tampa's tampa's division to lose but then you know our next opponent, Carolina. They just signed Cam Newton. He made an immediate impact yesterday with two touchdowns on his first two touches. You know what? What are they going to be going forward? Uh, can Matt Rule turn that around now with Cam? It'll be interesting to see. But yeah, I, I only see one playoff team coming out of this, this division, and it's uh, it's probably the Cowboys. I mean, let's be honest; they're flying. You know, aside from that game against the Broncos, the Cowboys are are you know the tops in in our division. So, of course, the sad news of the weekend was Sam Huff passed away on Saturday. Uh, I knew Sam very well for a long time, really admired him. He was part of what be my father's generation uh, of just men that were no-nonsense, hardworking. He, you know, he was one of the first great defensive players in the league uh, back in the 50s. You know, he went to the New York Giants, which he really loved. He was there six of, it, six of the eight years they were in the title game. I mean, when, when we Washington would travel to New York for games and we'd be at the team hotel or something, Sam was a god. People would come out of anywhere, Giants fans, for autographs. They loved them more than the Redskins fans did uh, on there. And, you know, he had, he had trouble with, you know, dementia the last 10 years or so. I saw him sometimes. It, it really was the long goodbye. And it was kind of sad I, I, that he lived so long with it, spoke to his conditioning because uh, he, he was in great shape even at 80 when I saw him. But just a, a good, hard-working, no-nonsense kind of guy. Fans loved him. You know, he was part of the game. You know, it's kind of like life. In the old days, today's wars are going to be about drones and computers and stuff. World War II was about guns and knives. Was, that's what life was back then. Sam was one of the guns and knives guys of the NFL uh, versus today, which is more about speed and directions and stuff like that. And people had, you know, no idea how good he was, how tough he was. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they were just these guys would beat each other to death, and the last man standing won the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it took its toll on him physically. I, he and I were having lunch one time in the mid '90s, and he grabs his head in pain. And he said he used to get, he'd get these spikes that just go through him like a bolt of lightning. I'm sure it's from the days of hitting everybody. Mm -hmm. Like so. Uh, you know, just this real shame to say goodbye to him. I have a long video on Rick Steiner's Washington on YouTube. Uh, where I, I wrote down 18 ideas of stories just off the top of my head about Sam. And, uh, you know, he was a lot of fun, too. He could really be a funny guy. So I'm going to him. Yeah, That's and, you know, obviously for my generation, it was more of growing up listening to Sonny Sam and Frank on the radio, who I will put up against any radio broadcast team for any other sports team. You know, that, that, that was the voice of my youth. We're listening to the Redskins. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, we've, we've seen Sonny recently. He's, he's doing okay, I guess. And, and, you know, now we've lost Sam. So, you know, it really, really sucks. But he yeah. lived a long life. He was 87. I mean, he, he definitely lived a full, complete life. But could they do a podcast? We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.